Many of you have heard my story of leaving my career in 1988 when I was at the pinnacle of my success. My book was in the hands of an agent who was talking to some top New York publishers. I was in negotiations for my own daytime TV talk show, and I had reps wanting to set up seminars for me as far away as Southeast Asia. And I gave it all up to be a full-time mom at home. Hi, I'm Deborah Poneman, founder of Yes to Success Seminars, where we share knowledge and tools for you to live your ultimate life. Anyway, I didn't exactly sit at home and, and uh, hand sew my children's clothing <laughs> and churn my own butter, but I lived each day following my heart and doing what made me happy, which was being the room mom and the team mom and the field trip mom and the holiday party mom. And I loved every minute of it, even though my colleagues had thought I had gone out of my mind. I did co-author a book on how to cook for your vegetarian kids, and I did run a home-based business that helped educate people on the importance of creating non-toxic homes and schools, but I only did kid-centered work, and only when there were no basketball games to cheer at or birthday parties to plan for or dance recitals to burst with pride through and it didn't matter to me one bit if my daughter was going right when all the other little girls were going left. And there were very few nights when I didn't tuck my children in bed and kiss them goodnight. But here's the question. Was I always grateful that I'd listened to my heart and took almost 20 years away from my career? Well, there were certainly moments when the answer was no when I really doubted that I'd done the right thing, like during my kids' teenage years, when I started to believe that everything I thought I had done really right, in fact, I had done terribly wrong, <laughs> and maybe they would have been better off had I been on the other side of the ocean giving a yes to success seminar, like somewhere in Singapore instead of hovering <laughs> over them. Anyway, or, by the way, when I saw the names of my yes to success graduates at the top of the New York Times bestseller list while I was home reading Clifford the Big Red Dog, or when I turned on the TV and there they were, all my graduates, well, not all my graduates, but many of my graduates smiling across the airwaves while I was knee deep in dirty diapers. Well, yes, there were times when I said to myself, what were you thinking? But I always sent my students love from my heart to theirs and I rejoiced in their happiness. And I said, and that's for me someday. And here's the key. Deep inside I knew that what I taught in my seminars was true. And that is that each of us has a calling. Each of us was put on earth to fulfill our God-given purpose. And if you follow your heart, even if it takes you on what appears to be a detour, your life's purpose is not going to go away. And even if you take what feels like a circuitous route there, if you're following your heart, you will end up at your destination. For example, if you take time away from your career to be with your kids or to go off for a few years and do work with, hmm, AIDS patients in Uganda or work on a political campaign or be at your mother's side for a while while she's struggling with dementia, or I don't know, you go and be a mime. That detour will still lead you to your life's purpose as long as you're listening to your inner guidance, even if others think you've gone out of your mind. The impulses of your heart are nothing less than your destiny calling you. Follow them and you will end up at your destination. As a matter of fact, it is probably the surest route to that ultimate destination. And I know that there are realities like bills to pay and families that depend on us. And I often get asked, would you still say to follow your heart? And the answer to that question is yes and no. What I say is this, don't be frantic about living your destiny. That will only push it further away. Here is your job. Enjoy the present moment. 
If you can't leave your job, throw yourself into it. Live each day fully, but make sure you have your heart's desire written down and you're visualizing it every day. My first spiritual teacher, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, used to tell us first deserve and then desire. In this context, I believe it means that whatever you are doing now, do the best job you can. Even if you feel it's not your life's purpose, give it your heart and soul while you are at the same time utilizing the law of attraction. For example, let's say you want to be, let's say you want to be a New York Times bestselling author, but right now you're a computer programmer. First of all, do a great job at whatever you're doing. Shock the people where you work and come to work every day with a great attitude of how can I serve? How can I contribute? How can I do the best job at what I'm doing? Look for the good where you're at. Appreciate those around you. Appreciate that you have a job and a paycheck. Cultivate gratitude. Second, cut out from the newspaper, the New York Times bestseller list and put your book as number one and look at it every day. And number three, take decisive action. Take at least one concrete step closer to your vision every single day. Do not put that beautiful head of yours on the pillow without taking at least one measurable step that day. You have to get the momentum going like the little engine that could. Every day, just chug along. One day, write the intro. The next day, write the dedication. Then read a similar book. Then do a half hour of research. Then write the table of contents. Content contents <laughs> and be accountable. You know, I often tell people don't share your sacred ideas with everyone. What is sacred must be kept secret. And I absolutely believe that. Don't just go around telling everybody your ideas because you know you're going to bop up against the discouragement committee who are they're going to put doubts in your mind about how brilliant your idea really is. But if you want to make progress and you could find someone you really really trust with your sacred idea, then you can check in with them every day or every other day. Get an accountability buddy, someone who will really hold your feet to the fire and you will hold theirs as you make progress towards your goals. So that's how you get going on your dream. And I love the quote that goes, luck is what happens when preparedness meets opportunity. People say, oh, you're so lucky. Yeah, that luck took a lot of hard work. So show the universe you're serious about your goals by being prepared and taking action and watch your luck skyrocket with unlimited opportunity coming your way. So that's it for this week. Can't wait to see what happens. Sending love your way today and every day. Bye for now.